Welcome to part three on the Jewish versus the, our hijab uh, talk. Okay, now I'll go to the eight conditions right on. And these eight conditions, don't worry, they don't come from the Quran or the Sunnah. They had the conditions first, and then they started looking for the justification in the Quran and the Sunnah. Okay, it's, it's, it's completely different. Finding out what Allah says about an issue is completely different than having your own opinion, and then you go into the Quran and you look for justification. They say that the hijab must cover her entire body even when she is at home and this is extremely strange because when you are alone by yourself you dress very modestly all right and all her body is covered even if you are going to perform your salah then you must wear your hijab as if Allah might fancy you my sister when you are at home so in front of him you cover yourself why does a woman need to cover all her body when she performs salat and the man doesn't beats me really I don't I fail to understand the thinking behind this it is a life you perform your salat with, with your bare head you don't cover your hair what is the problem of that in Islam the Quranic Islam there is no problem in the Judaic Islam there is a problem so which one are you following point number two they say that the hijab should be thick enough to conceal what is underneath it says who Okay, the Torah said that, and because the Torah says it, then it must be good, right? Well, you got the answer. Allah says, when, when you are going to pray, take your purification. Who in their right mind, when they go out and they have modesty, would wear revealing clothing? Who would perform her salat at home in her lingerie? Who would do that? SubhanAllah. Number three, they say, it should be loose-fitting, not tight. Again, who can decide what's loose-fitting and what's not? Scholars debated this issue to death and until none of them ever came to a conclusion. One's sheikh loose fitting is another's sheikh tight and the, bat and the battle rages on. They can't agree on what's loose fitting because guess what? It's nonsense. Allah didn't say that. So humans to, to design that, they fight amongst themselves. Four, it should not be so attractive as to call man's attention to it. Again, who decides what's attractive and what's not? To cut this argument short, they just went ahead and copied what the Jews did at the third century. Black as a crow should put any man off any woman. Until you see women in black resemble a group of crows in a field eating of a dead corpse. Look at the Kaaba in Hajj today. Look at Mecca when they pray at the Kaaba. See how men are dressed in all white and women are like that black spot on your white wedding dress. As uh, in, the sp in the words of Star Wars, women belong to the dark side and the dress in dark or black has got a more frightening meaning than you can ever think of. Women are evil. Evil is dark. Five, it should not be perfumed, our scholars say. Of course, a man can wear a factory of perfume, and it is a sunnah for him to do so to smell good. But a woman must smell like a fart. She must stink so that no one gets aroused around her. This is pure villainy indeed. Who said that? Why shouldn't I've got to talk again on my internet, on my YouTube, please go listen to it about women and perfume, and you will find that all this argument is based on a stupid, what they call hadith. Okay, it should not, the number six, they say it should not be a dress of fame or vanity, i.e. it should not be extravagant or excessively opulent. Well, the woman must wear something old. That's what I'm saying. If that is what they say in the condition six, then a woman must wear something old, something bad looking, old textile. And again, old textile is preferred. And when buying her clothes, she must buy the cheapest. And that's because she's a woman on a mission. Her mission, mission is to look like a dead black crow. And this is absolutely stupid, ridiculous. Point number seven, it should not resemble the dress of man and there you go my question is who invented the dress 
Was it a man or a woman? Who wore the dress first? Was it a man or a woman? If it is a man who designed the dress, then women should not wear a dress. And if it is a woman who wore the dress first, then men should not wear a dress, pure and simple, right? So, again, the underwear that we wear, who invented it? If it is man, then women must not wear underwear. And if it is women, then men must not wear underwear. And we are doomed. Because wearing trousers with no underwear, I'd rather die. So, what is this idea of uh, it should not resemble the dress of a man? Completely ridiculous. A socks is uh, resembling a man. The gloves that they put on women resembles a man. Uh, a sweatshirt, a t-shirt, whatever you've got. God, God almighty. Anyhow, number eight, they say it should not resemble the dress of Catholic women. And this is the influence of the third century when Muslims were invaded by different culture, different uh, education, different knowledge. Uh, scholars were looking for ways to tame the crowds. And so they invented all this. Uh, they are Catholic, we are Muslims. They go to hellfire we go to Jannah. Don't listen to them. Listen to us. Completely ridiculous. Allah doesn't say that. And I hear you. So Kafir women can look gorgeous in their dresses and have Arabs of the Gulf and Muslims around the world salivate and dream of beautiful Kafir women who dresses sexually. Her perfumes are extremely arousing in her beautification. God. Oh, accessories. Look at them. Uh, what do you call them? The thing, the uh, Earrings. Okay, and why not? Uh, why not? Why not her wearing tight dresses so we can enjoy her silhouette and preferably her garment must not cover all of body and and and. But to a Muslim woman, it is a no, no, no. Wallahi alazim. What to say to this stupidity? To all those lies that have been fabricated in the name of the greatest religion, Al Islam, and we have the best version of that Islam. Guess all this malarkey. Number nine, it should not be adorned with any crosses or pictures of animate beings. And I understand for crosses because the cross represents uh, Jesus being son of God. And uh, yes, I agree with that. But again, if a woman wears an eagle or wears a snake, or, that is haram. Why? Because pictures are haram. Well, no longer haram are they today. Again, check my talk on the internet on how um, women uh, things that were haram before became haram. I was working at the time. That's why I got distracted. But anyhow, I will tell you something, my sisters and my brothers, okay? Allah did not put all these conditions. What you are, women, the more Salafi you become, the more Jewish you will look like. And that is for men or women. Remove the turban. Remove something. The hat that the Jews wear and put a, a Jewish man and put a Salafi man, they will look like each other. If you just change the clothes, they will look like each other. Women, again, the niqab on the face is Jewish. The black dress is Jewish. Covering the entire body is Jewish. Well, the truth is in the Quran. I'm not going to tell you what to wear because Allah did not specify for a woman what to wear. I'm not going to specify for you. All what it is is the beauty that you wear must be for you not to attract that intention. You have it in your heart. Wearing a tight mini skirt with sexy things and, and the shoes is a clear sign that you are on the market of pollen. Accepting or not accepting this idea, it's there. Woman dresses for that. You look sexy. Sexy and why sexy so that the right man comes to her. But when she is madly in love with a man, she doesn't dress like that. Why? Again. Okay, so again, my dear sisters and my brothers, I pray to Allah this will open your eyes to that the more Salafi you are. And to me, and to history, and to the books of uh, fiqh and knowledge of both Muslims and Jews, the more Salafi you are, the more Jewish you are. And that's the truth behind it. And I can produce here so many uh, texts, but against the nine minutes limit. Again, until my next talk, inshallah, you remain in the same uh, mercy of Allah and enjoy your life and keep away from Judaism. We have a better version of Islam. Al Quran is beautifully simple. Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.